Good news by the plenty in today's video. Good news number one. I've now got a tripod, which is why the camera looks a little bit different. So when I shake my desk, I mean, my computer shakes, so I can't really tell whether that shook then, but I don't think it did. So that's good thing number one. Tripod is in. Good thing number two. We've already been promoted. everybody and welcome to part 12 of club 2 here on my career on fm23 i'm Stu. thank you for joining me in today's video where we've got the final two games of the league one season against wigan and against mk dons as i mentioned already we are promoted but we do still have something to play for and that is the league one title and if you are excited to see whether we can win the league one title or not please remember to leave a like on there for me and subscribe so you never miss any of the lovely football manager content to come from this space right here if we win the title today, that means we've won the whatever league we've been in in every season so far. Remember, we won National League South. We won the National League. We then won League Two with uh, Tranmere last season. The first two were with Dartford. We won League Two with Tranmere last season. And they've just been relegated from League One as well. So we're looking to not just go back straight up, but we're looking to go up another league again. So that'll be four in a row. We'll have won. Promotion's obviously not enough for us, but we are already confirmed to be a championship team. Um, since you were last with us, it's been great. <laughs> it's been it's been really good. I've really liked it. Um, I, the games I think were the Peterborough and Lincoln games. Um, we haven't lost since then. Beat Sheffield Wednesday one 0 Beat Cheltenham three 0 A Zach Emerson hat trick. Zach Emerson is just on fire at the moment. If he's not scoring, he's assisting. Um, Bristol Rovers then were swept aside again. Zach Emerson, Ben Knight continuing his resurgence. He's not been great every game, but he's been great in quite a few of them. Finley Pollock on the score sheet as well. Leighton Orient, that draw was a bit disappointing. Zach Emerson did get on the score sheet though. And then Josh Phillips of all people re-emerged from somewhere. He hasn't scored in a long time. Yes, he was injured and he had a period where I just refused to select him even on the bench. Um, and then he's come in every now and then. Hasn't really looked sharp, but in that game, he just managed to get the ball in the back of that. Actually looked really lively. So whether we get him back next season or not, I'm not too sure. I think he would be okay in the championship, but he's just not done very well for us this season. But then after that game, which James Balagizzi did manage to kind of get the cherry on top for us. Tommy Lee got two goals against Fleetwood, which means the table currently looks like this. It's a five-point gap with two games, six points remaining. It means if we win this one, or potentially even if we get a draw um, due to the goal difference, I think we will go up as champions, I believe. We are playing a Wigan side today who are already confirmed to be a playoff team, so they are going to be a challenge. And also an MK Dons team who are solidly mid-table. Quick thing to point out on here, Zach Emerson has overtaken Sam Barnes as the best player in the league. Him... So, well, those two and Arthur Oconquo are all up for best player in League One. So, we've got a good chance of winning that particular prestigious award. Arthur Oconquo, by the way, currently third in the clean sheets chart. 21 for the other two players there. It's Daniel Bentley from Barnsley and uh, Boyce Clark from Reading as well. So, if he can get two clean sheets, he will win that, assuming they don't get clean sheets. And Zach Emerson, nine player of the match awards. He's the top goal scorer in the league as well. Bear in mind, he took a while to get going. Zach Emerson's form is ridiculous. Look at the amount of goals. You probably can't see them all. So bear with me two secs. Let's just sort that out for you. There we go. I haven't done that in a while. Um, as you can see, the form is ridiculous down the side there. Just it's a goal contribution every game at the very least. Other than this one game here against Sheffield Wednesday. Other than this game where we rested him the game before that and the game before that. We got a hat-trick couple of games before those. Missed the game there with any con goal contributions, but then the goal games before we got goals as well. I can't speak. He's been so good. He's just been a ridiculous machine. And the thing is, he's not necessarily played that well in a lot of the games. He's just put the ball in the back of the net in virtually all of them. The man's utterly ridiculous. He utterly, utterly is. Um, anything else I'm trying to think to... Yeah, there is one thing that's been a bit crazy, and that is because of the injury issue that we had before, which has now cleared up for the most part... Finley Pollock is now out for the rest of the season. That is a bit unfortunate. We've had to use Matthew Bonds one. And we've actually got him signed to a new contract. Now, the reason I've done this is because I actually think we can move him on and make some money on him. Because remember, he was brought in as a free transfer. But we've ended up having to use him in recent times. Now, he's not been particularly brilliant. But he has had two standout games and a couple that weren't too bad at all. So he is a useful option to have, actually. Whether we will be next season or not, I don't really know. But Ben Hockenhall's return from his injury, as has Kapatpe. Jake O'Brien has turned into a superstar for us, though. He has been ever-present. I mean, look at the run of games of seven or above there. 
He's been great. He's got a cheeky goal there as well. He's been really good. I've been really impressed with him. So I'm glad that we've got him in the side. So he is going to be part of the back three today. Speaking of which, the 11 for the game against Wigan. This is what we're going to go with. It's a conquering goal. though. Brian Barnes and Kapak pay in the defence with Lance Foster and Beck out wide. Cottrell and the Pyre forcing in the middle with Knight and Lee supporting Emerson up front. Shipley hasn't been in the best of form recently. He's not been bad, but I'm just giving a Pyre Forsen a game today because he had been in trash form and he's all of a sudden looking a little bit better. Now, he is on a heavy match workload compared to everyone else because while there's been quite a few gaps between games, he's been playing in the under-21s. So, it was a good choice to get the under-21 team, actually. Um, players who are missing out. Finley McAllister hasn't really made an impact here. Finn Back has just been pushed out since we signed Frank Tidabo, who's on the bench because he can cover every defensive position. And Bristow really hasn't performed recently as well. So, we're just going to get into the game and we'll see whether we can pick up possibly the point, if not the three points, that we need to lift the trophy. Now, what I will say is, I don't have my trophies out. I don't know what I've done with them, my little Lego trophies. So I won't be lifting a physical trophy if we do end up going all the way and winning the League One title. We'll just have to make do with what we see on the screen and me doing a bit of a fist pump. So, can we beat Wigan? Let's find out, shall we? I'd like to think we can. I think we've got enough in us. I actually can't remember, if I'm honest, how we did in the last game against Wigan. I'm not 100% sure how we did, but we've got enough in us to do it. I mean, we've got enough in us to beat any team in this league. Zach Emerson is in here, and in the colours of my favourite team, Aston Villa, he's put us a goal ahead, and I'm very happy about it. I don't know who got the assist. I wasn't paying much attention, but I'm glad he's put it in the back of the net because we might be winning the title in this first video of the episode. Uh, a pie force and gets it to Lee. Lee, does he make the pass? He does make the pass. And Zach Emerson just breaks through the line. Bearing in mind he's a big, strong boy. I say he's a big, strong boy. I know he's relatively tall. Um, I'm sorry if you want to watch the replay of that, but you're not watching it. I mean, six foot one with strength of 14th. He's a relatively big, strong boy. And, he, and Tommy Lee and Zach Emerson have had a great partnership. And Ben Knight has just been his own entity who occasionally has done a good job. We are going to tell Pat Pay to calm down because he's already got a yellow card. We had one game recently where we just got so many yellow cards and it was utterly ridiculous. Um, are Barnsley playing? Yes, they are. They're currently beating, uh, I think it was Charlton 1-0. So that's the other thing. If Charlton um, do us a favour and win or at least get a draw, it doesn't actually matter what happens with us, really. But we don't want to rely on that, and again, especially because Barnsley are 1-0 ahead. We want to make sure we get the job done on our terms. Emerson is so up for this. Gets the ball to Ben Knight. Ben Knight now running out wide as instructed. He's done really well doing that. Crossing it in, looking for Tommy Lee, and Tommy Lee makes it too. Ben Knight with the assist. It's 2-0 after 33 minutes. After 32 minutes, sorry. Um... I was going to say, is it the 32nd or 33rd minute? And I just balls it up completely. The point is, we're currently winning 2-0, and I'm a very happy man about it. And Ben Knight continues his resurgence in form. I mean, it's at the point now where his resurgence in form, it's just good form. He's just turned into a good footballer. Now, what we do have to talk about is the facts that we're going to have what we were going to have in the Dartford portion of the save. We're going to be going up to a league where I do not think we are going to survive. I think there's a good shout that we will get relegated next season. But unless a really good offer comes in, I have no intention of leaving Tranmere. I'm enjoying this so much. I'm, I've been able to craft this team with a little bit more precision and a little bit more choice than I did the Dartford team. The Dartford team, we had to kind of take what we could get. With this team, we were able to bring in Zach Emerson after we identified him as a player to bring in. Remember, when we first had Zach Emerson, he wasn't actually that good. He scored a few goals, but then that was it. Like We couldn't get him back on loan for the second half of last season, and we just noticed that we weren't quite as potent. Yes, Josh Phillips scored a lot of goals, but that, he just went for an overhead kick. It's League One, you madman. It's half time. Um, yeah, Josh Phillips did score a decent amount of goals last season, and he did help us get promoted. We do have to acknowledge that. Absolutely. Um, I didn't want to say disappointed then, but it got had the desired effect. Everyone is motivated. But Zach Emerson in the team just makes the team play a little bit better in this system. And it's proven it this season, the amount of goals he scored. Like, he went from not scoring a lot to begin with to all of a sudden 
just exploding for goals and he's now the top of the goals chart which is obviously lovely to see it's about substitute clock so i think we should make a couple of changes tommy lee has been great but he is tiring so balagizi can come on and have some football we're also going to take off joe cottrell jordan shipley can come on and play as the playmaker and the fullbacks aren't having the best of games so lions foster can come off we'll bring darbo on darbo's not been that great in that position and pat pay's not been great either so ben hockenhall can come on we'll swap him with jake o'brien give hockenhall some game time as well um but yeah, so the point I was making is Zach Emerson, the signing of that has been really justified. And the amount of goals he scored this season in this league, I'd like to think he'll get some goals next season. I think he's big enough and awkward enough that he'll just bully some defenders out of the way. I'd like to think. I think Knight and, and Tommy Lee, I think, will have enough about them. Uh, maybe not to be as good as they have been this season, but I think they'll have an effect on the league. But it's difficult to judge. That's poor. And I think that was Sam Barnes as well. But O'Brien is there to clean up his mistake. Sam Barnes switched off a bit there. Emerson now tonight. And all of a sudden, we're countering. Ben Knight goes into a force. And Balagizi looking for Zach Emerson. Zach Emerson just can't quite beat the defender for pace. But actually, Balagizi gets back on the end of it and might try and whip it back in. No, he goes to Beck who does that. But Ben Knight kind of pulls out. He's not an aerial threat, so I don't blame him. Darban out into Shipley. Shipley trying to recycle things. We go all the way back to Barnes. I won't be surprised if the highlight cuts at some point. Big ball forward. And Balagizi puts it wide. It was a perfect opportunity for three. And we don't make it count. We do have one substitution left. I think we'll bring off another tired player. Apaya Forsen is going to be that man. And we're going to swap these two rounds. So it's going to be Daly who plays as the playmaker. That will do. I should have really brought Josh Phillips on, actually. His form recently has deserved another appearance, but it's not going to happen in this game. And I've just thought, Barnsley are winning. It doesn't matter, though, because we've only gone and bloody won League One. Each league we've been in, we've won. That is going to end next season. We're not winning the championship. Absolutely not. Like I said before, I have no intention of leaving Tranmere. No intention whatsoever. What I want to do is I want to stay with Tranmere for at least another year and see what we can do. And if we can build something next season, if we can overachieve and finish lower mid-table, I will take that. I will absolutely take that. So I have got no intention of leaving this club this season unless we get a very good offer. If we get a good offer, remember, using realism rules, more money... Maybe let's say the location isn't too far away. Maybe we want to move closer to the Midlands. Maybe we want to closer to London. Maybe, I don't know. But it, has, it would have to be something I would want to do in real life. And at the moment, I'm very comfortable at Tranmere. Very comfortable. I'm not comfortable on this chair. I'm just going to put that out there right now if I'm shifting about a lot. I've been sat at my computer for a couple of hours. And it's a folding chair. It's not the best. You don't need to know that. The point is, we've just won the league. And I'm very happy about that. Um... We might as well play the last game against MK Dons. Why not? Let's see whether we can finish on 99 points. I think that would be good fun. And um, we've already had our budgets, by the way. Um, the budget for transfer budget was a bit higher. It was like 1.1, 1.2 million or something like that. We've moved some of that over to the scouting budget quite a lot, in fact, because we went so far over our scouting budget this season. I just thought it was worth doing. And our wage budget at the moment, we've got actually about 30,000 to play with. But in reality, once a lot of the loan players have gone, it's more like... 40,000 that we'll have to play with, which I think is going to be good. We're going to have to spend some big boy money next season to bring in some players who are going to be able to do us the job. But that is us promoted. We're going to come back for the game against MK Dons. We don't need to, but I just, you know, why not? Let's do it. Let's round it up and then we can start next episode of Transfer Special as we normally would. I'm tripping over words. I cannot believe, cannot believe we've got promoted cannot believe we've come straight up from League 2 and gone straight up. It's happened in real life. It has happened in real life. But I did not expect that to happen this season. Give it two years and we'll be in the Premier League. We've not even finished the season and it's already begun. Ross County have offered me a job interview. Um, I'm going to decline it. I don't necessarily want to move to Scotland. I think as well they've been relegated. So if I was going to go to Scotland, it would have to be in the Premier League. We're not going. It's simple as that. Again, it has to be a very good offer. If a mid-table champion, not championship, mid-table Scottish Premiership club came in, I would consider that because it would be definitely a step up into the Scottish champion, the Scottish Premiership. I know some people wouldn't agree with that, and and I have my own opinion on how good the Scottish league is compared to the English league. But actually, it's the top league in a European country that has Europe, a chance of Europe. 
I wouldn't be against that. But we did decline it, and I'm sticking by that. It has to be a very good job to get me to leave this club this season. End of next season, who knows? But I want to give it a shot first before we end up doing what we did to Dartford again. Dartford fans, I'm really sorry I did that. Okay. Time for our last League One game, hopefully ever. Uh, it's Tranmere versus MK Dons, and this is the 11 we're going to be using. We're not rotating anything. We'll go with our strongest team because there's a couple of things. Number one, Oconquo, I think he's still within the shout of the clean sheet record. He sort of is. We need Daniel Bentley and Boyce Clark to have a mare. So he could be in the running for it potentially. I don't know whether it will work out or not. But he could at least equal it. And also, we want players like Zach Emerson and Sambar to get the best ratings possible as well. Just so they can be the best player of the season as well. I would quite like that. But this is the 11. It's a Conquen goal. It's O'Brien, Barnes and Kapatpe in defence. Lions Foster and Beck in the fullback positions with Cottrell and a Pyre Force. And are we going to go with a Pyre Force? And do you know what? I don't think we are. Last minute change. It's Jordan Shipley. Jordan Shipley, who's actually gone down to two and a half star, which is interesting. Might be his last game for us. Shipley and Cottrell are going to be in the midfield with Knight and Lee supporting Emerson up front. We'll try and get Josh Phillips on. We'll also try and get Matty Daly on as well. I feel like this might be the last we might see of those guys. Just because, number one, Phillips... I don't know whether we want him next season. He's not had the impact this season I was hoping he would do. I certainly thought he would actually do better than Emerson. Remember, Emerson's predicted to be a good championship player. With Phillips, he's predicted to be a decent Premier League player, or at least have the potential to be a Premier League player of some description. So you would have thought Phillips would have been the better player. Unfortunately for him, um, Emerson has outclassed him completely this season. So... I don't know whether we'll have him back in daily as well. We might try and move him on because in the nicest possible, Zach Emerson is just a goal machine. Um, daily, I don't think has the potential really to step up to championship. I think he could be a really, really good leading League One player. He hasn't been that for us this season, so I don't think he's at that level. And I don't think he ever will be, to be completely honest. It's a bit harsh, I know. And um, we did try and get Phillips back. Uh, Man City said no. Also, at the moment, uh, Swansea are saying no about Joe Cottrell. I'm determined to get him back because he has been good for us. Ben Knight not having a good game at the moment, which is a bit concerning. Oh, uh, how are Barnsley doing? I just want to see. Barnsley are currently winning. If Leighton Orient can get a goal, I'd be very happy about that because that means we could be in with a shout of a Conquo getting the clean sheet record, assuming, of course, we keep a clean sheet. We now have a highlight. Beck running forward down that left wing. He's going to try and swing across in. He does, looking for Emerson. Emerson gets the header there, but Roberts makes the easy save. And now MK Dons have the ability to make a counter-attack, and they do. However, we get the ball back. Lions Foster into Shipley. Shipley to Emerson, into Lee, who's picked up a knock. Back to Emerson, though. Emerson into Ben Knight, and Ben Knight skies it over completely. What an opportunity he had there. But a lack of composure there just means he can't do anything. It's a knee injury for Tommy Lee. We're not taking any chances. Balagizzi's coming on. Uh, again, balagizzi has been good for us this season. I just don't know whether he will make the transition to the championship as well. It won't hurt to have players like him available on the bench. It's just we need to make sure that he is comfortable with not playing a lot of football. That's the issue. So we could see us sell a few players this season and rebuild the team. We know what the core of the team is going to be. A Conquo is going to be here unless we see a decent goalkeeper because the big game thing in a season where every game is a big game, because your relegation fodder worries me a little bit. We might move him on if we think that becomes an issue. But actually, he looks like he'll be decent enough. Emerson will definitely be here. Barnes will definitely be here. We can keep Cottrell. He will definitely be here. Beyond those players, I don't really know. We'll have to have a proper look through the team. I mean, Jake O'Brien at the moment is at the level that we'd need him to be. But it's a, it's a difficult thing to call the step up. It is a difficult thing to call. So let's just go in to it. We're going to the transfer window with as much of an open mind as possible. And just not be as precious as perhaps I can be sometimes. I do feel a bit emotionally attached to some players at times. And I think we need to go into it with a bit more of a clinical view. We need to be looking at it and thinking what's going to help us succeed as most as possible next season. Now, because we've got the... Oh, my word. Because we've got the... Oh, that had me worried. Because we've had our transfer budget in and because we've been able to change our um, scouting budget. I can't think of the word there. Uh, because we've been able to do something with that. This is going to be 1-1. One, one. This has got 1-1 one, one written all over it. No, it doesn't. Oh, my word. Oh, I still want this clean sheet for a Conquo. I still want it. 
Um, they keep interrupting my point, and I'm not happy about it. Oh, goodness me. Leighton Orient have scored. We've got a chance at this. I can't remember who the other guy plays for, but we've got a chance. Come on, boys. Let's get in there. I'm demanding more. I want another goal from us. I've forgotten what the point I was making was. Completely forgotten it. No, it's gone. It's gone completely. I'm going to kick myself on a medicine disc. I'll be like, oh, that was a really good point to do. And you forgot it because you're a big nerd. Uh, Matty Daly's going to come on. I'm going to bring Josh Phillips on for the last few minutes. I'm not going to do it just yet. Pat pays nervous. Hawk and Hall can come on for the last few minutes of the season as well. We'll make those two changes. We've got a few more to make. The point's going to come out to me when I finish recording. I know it is. I just know it is. But So the core of the team, it's going to be Emerson, Barnes, and the Conquo. The midfield is going to be the issue. I think we definitely need to strengthen in the midfield. But that's it. Scouting budget. We're now scouting out of contract players. So hopefully we get some bargains. Or maybe ex-Premier League players who are a bit older who maybe we can just entice to come to the club. I don't know how likely that is. I think it could happen. Um, I'll tell you what we'll do. We're just going to try and bung the ball over the defence. And we'll see whether we can just get Josh Phillips to run onto it. That's what we did when he scored the other day in the other game. So hopefully we can get that to happen here. Or hopefully we can just get through the game with a clean sheet. There we go. See the season off with a 1-0 win. Zach Emerson gets his final goal of the season. He cements his golden boot for the league. And he does it in some style. He's been sensational for us all season long. Not all season long, in fact. He started off pretty rough. And... He's ended it like a superstar. Hopefully, he hits the ground running a little bit sooner next season. Barnsley ended up winning their game 3-1. So, the final table has Tranmere and Barnsley at the top. And the playoff places go to Reading, Wigan, Peterborough and Bolton. Reading, Wigan and Peterborough, I think you'd expect to be in and around there. Birmingham City will feel a little bit hard done by that they're so far down the table as they are. Um, looking at the teams who got relegated, Port Vale, Swindon, Burton and Bristol... I think Bristol Rovers and Burton Albion can find themselves very unlucky. Swindon Town, I don't, I don't know enough about this league and who's normally there. I think they can probably feel less aggrieved than these two, possibly. Um, Oxford and Leighton just about surviving. MK Dons getting involved in the relegation fight near the end, but not quite. They're actually a decent enough distance away. Uh, but Birmingham City, gutted. Absolutely gutted. Not reveling in it at all. Um, so, yeah, we need to look at this squad and we need to really properly decide what we need. Good to see Bolton in the playoff spot. Six to eight days for Tommy Lee doesn't matter because the season is finished. I'm not going to do the press conference here because why would I? But that's it. That's it for League One. League One is done. Next season, we will be in the championship. Just to confirm as well, the XG table has us top. In terms of the season preview... Had us fifth, and I don't actually think it originally had us fifth. We have overachieved in every single. Well, we haven't even overachieved on XG. XG has us exactly where we are. So just to confirm, Zach Emerson, 30 goals for the league season. Very well done. He finishes as the best player as well with Sam Barnes a close second. And a Conquo gets the top of the clean sheets chart as well. That's delightful. 10 Zach Emerson player of the match awards as well. In terms of assists, it's Lyons Foster with 10. He's only two off the top spot. But Tommy Lee's there, Cottrell's there, Ben Knight's there. All good things to see. We'll have a closer look at this stuff uh, in the next episode when we do the season review. But I just want to see what the average ratings look like. If it'll let me... It'll let me close that gap. No, it won't. Okay. Let's do it like this. We know Emerson and Barnes. Then it's a Conquo. That makes no... Um, surprises, if I'm being honest. Uh, Jordan Shipley was next. Bit of a surprise, but I can accept that. Pat Pay was great as well. Tommy Lee had a few patches where he wasn't great, but towards the end of the season, he really picked up. Hocken Hall was really solid as well. Jake O'Brien really picked up towards the end of the season. It's good to see Ben Knight picked up his form enough that he's on here as well. In particular, in his last five games, he's been great. Finley Pollock did really well for us when we needed him to, and Joel Cottrell was the best. They're the best players in the league. I'd say, obviously, we've got some of the lone boys in here, but I'd say this group of players here are going to form the core of next season. It doesn't mean all of them are going to start, but I think all of these guys will be in the squad. Everyone below that line has probably got a little bit of concern. Now, things we do have to consider. Some of these guys we probably can get back who've got the high potential. If we've got high potential and they start playing well, they'll reach that potential a bit quicker maybe. Uh, but we do also have the players who are on loan. And in terms of high potential players, McIntyre is not going to be ready. Winter and Spearing, 
not going to be ready. Luis Kumas might be near ready. He's only a two and a half star player, which is probably around League Two. But he's had a decent season for um, Dartford. Actually, where have Dartford ended up? That's a good question in the National League. Dartford have ended up, they're in a playoff place. They are in a playoff place. They've got one game left to play. They're not going to fall out of the playoffs and they're not going to get promoted. But they have got a playoff place. So it'll be interesting to see how they do. Right. That's enough rambling from me. That is the end of the season pretty much we've just got the season review to do we'll do that in the next episode and then we'll have a look and see what we can do to get this club championship ready thank you so much for watching if you've enjoyed today's video with the promotion and the title win leave a like on the video for me and subscribe so you never miss any of the football manager content from the channel i'm Stu. you guys have been awesome and i'll see you in the next one cheers